Mr. Mega Man fan, and welcome back to Genesis Does. Today, we're looking at Putter Golf. Don't bother trying to find a physical cartridge. There isn't one. This game was originally part of the Sega Game Toshikan, or Sega Game Library, if you translate that to English, a Mega Drive cartridge that came with the Mega Modem in 1990. We've talked on this show before about the Mega Modem and various ideas that were thought of to bring games from remote services into your home, including the Sega channel that eventually required a cable modem and a special adapter to download games to a physical cartridge and then erase them once you turned off your Genesis. So there were some games that were exclusive to these type of devices that never saw any other form of release. But this one, even though it didn't ever come out physically for the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, there is another version of it that you can play. It's called Putt and Putter, and it's a Sega Game Gear game. You've undoubtedly seen it before if you've wandered around any retro gaming store and looked through their cheap bin of Sega Game Gear games. It's usually two or three bucks, very plentiful, Seems like a game a lot of people bought because they're like, hey, it's mini golf. I like mini golf. I'm sure my kid will like mini golf. This will be a fun way for them to play with their game gear. And to a certain degree, it is. It is mini golf. I'll give it that. It is playable. I'll give it that. It's certainly not the best version of mini golf you can play. And in fact, I would go so far as to say... It's a rather poor version of it. You don't get a lot of control over the ball, over the physics, over the play field. It's very, very rudimentary, which you would expect on a Game Gear or the Sega modem given the file size and the slow bandwidth that they were using for that service. But, well, you can only forgive them for so much. To look at the entire play field, you have to scroll one pixel square of your crosshairs at a time from one side of the screen to the other. There's no way to overview the entire course. Certainly no way to quickly do it. You can't speed from one side to the other. You have to tediously look at the whole course if you can't see where to shoot. And sometimes if you're impatient like I am, you'll just shoot blindly and hope for the best because you get tired of having to look at the whole course first before you do anything. It's an incredible pain. And the power meter is very unforgiving. It swings from low to high quickly, and there's no gauge on the distance that the power will provide. You, know, you don't have any way to measure how hard you're hitting it. You just have to guess which amount of power is enough for the shot you want to hit and go for it. Which means more often than not, you're either going to under hit it or over hit it because there's no way to know. You just have to learn the hard way. Once you've hit it once too hard, you dial it back. Once you've hit it too softly and it doesn't go in the cup, you know to push it up a little bit. There's no excuse for this lack of finesse and... It's only compounded by the fact that it's very, very unforgiving, which I guess for a download game that's intended to be a miniature experience, maybe that's not so bad because you didn't pay the price for a full game, so they're trying to make it harder to milk the most gameplay out of a very small file. Fine, but in 2021, that's not holding water because... There's no reason to take away balls every time you miss a shot and give you a game over if you're that many strokes over whatever they consider par to be. Their definition of par and the game's mechanics are totally out of whack. They do not correlate to each other. If you get to the second or third hole, consider yourself lucky because that means you've hit a couple of incredibly good shots managed to pull off par or one over at best at least it does reward you if you go under and give you a ball back but again this whole system just seems ludicrous to me 
why not just let you play every hole, no matter how far over or under you go, tally your score at the end, and then let you try to get a better score next time. That's what a standard miniature golf game would do. That's what you'd do playing miniature golf, period. You'd play every single hole, tally up your score, compare it to your friends, and then see who had the best score and try to do better the next round, knowing that you play the holes and you know the shots and you can take better shots than you did the last time and try to up your game, or you could take a risky shot and try to get a hole in one, or you can play it safe and see if you can beat your average, whatever. There's strategy to miniature golf, and this takes all the strategy out of it because it punishes you. It says, you suck, loser, Start over again. You're not good enough. Get good. It's miniature golf, dumbass. You're supposed to be better than that. Well, with these controls, you can't be better than that. Oh, it's a good thing this was a pack-in and a small download and everything else about it because it's definitely not something you'd pay for this for if it was big and expansive because if it was any more than what it is it would be brutal it's just barely acceptable at this level and more than this would not be good so i guess play putt and putter on the game gear if you're gonna play this at all the sega net version for mega drive is exclusive to japan and quite frankly, should stay that way. This is a curiosity for those who want to dig deep into the archives of Mega Drive and Genesis history. You want to learn more about obscure games that never showed up anywhere else? Fine. Then fire it up in emulation and give it a spin like I'm doing here. I don't think you need to go much beyond that. I wouldn't put it on a micro SD card and put it in an analog Mega Drive. I certainly wouldn't put it on one of those Mega Drive Pro cartridges or one of the variants that Terra Onion makes that does the same thing. Why would you waste the space that could be used for CD games? Even though a lot of Sega CD games are quick time events with full motion video and not really so much playable experiences as just advance to the next video by pressing the right button in time but even that could be more fun than playing putter golf because at least you have to memorize the events and try to get them in the right order it's like dragon slayer in that case you know it's like you want to see all the videos so you try to memorize it and do your best but the best you can do with putter golf still isn't that good if there was just even a way to see how your shot looks before you hit it. If it gave you some sort of preview, dotted lines so you could line up the angle of your shot, then it would be more tolerable that it penalizes you for going strokes over because at least you tried to aim your shot in and you missed, but you can do better the next time. And you know what? I'm just, I'm done with putter golf i'm mr mega man fan thanks for watching have a good one i'll see you all next week bye for now